Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Reggae Marathon Running Guy here. Nine months to go. Saturday, December the 2nd. Looking forward to it. We're all going to be gathered in the grill to relax, catch up with our friends live, and of course go for a run. And I got to tell you, I can't wait for it. So today we're going to answer one of the questions that we got recently about what it's like to be out on the course at Reggae Marathon. To answer that, what I'm going to really do is take you on a tour, one lap of Reggae Marathon's road course. Now, we start and finish. Reggae Marathon starts and finish at Long Bay Beach Park, which is along the uh, strip, the beach strip in the grill. Plan to get to the uh, start-finish line about uh, 4.30 in the morning. I know it's early. Gives you about 45 minutes, though, to get kind of accustomed to, uh, to where you are, check your bag, get some hydration. And most importantly... Get yourself lined up in the uh, corrals in the uh, start-finish area. That's really important because one of the biggest faux pas you can possibly do uh, at any race is to uh, line up uh, in front of faster runners. All you're going to do is block them. You possibly could get injured. So look out for the uh, start-finish corrals. Find the time that uh, best matches your uh, expected finish time. As you go through, as Frano sends us off promptly at 5.15, he's not been late yet, and I don't expect him to be late again this year. Um, As you cross the start-finish line timing mats, look out for the torches that will line both sides of the road, left and right. Now, as we get out there, it's dark. Um, And a second faux pas, something just not to do at the race, and that is to stop and take selfies just after you cross the start-finish line. A couple of years ago, I ran into a lady really heavily, and uh, thankfully, we, we, we both uh, survived that. We didn't fall um, or get seriously injured. But it, um, it really is a problem if you're, if you're starting the race and all of a sudden you want to take a selfie. Wait till it gets lighter. Wait till you have a chance to do it uh, in a safe situation. Step off the road if you have to, off the course if you have to. Um, now, it is dark, but there are street lights. So all you really have to do is just keep moving, keep running. We're across the full width of the road, okay? So um, you know, lots of room, lots of space to, to get running. As we come up in about uh, mile one, you look out for the race marshals. They're going to direct us over to the right side of the road. And you're going to hit the first aid station. Um, water and electrolyte replacement are available at each and every aid station along the, uh, along the regular marathon course. And what I love about it is that it's in these little plastic pouches. Why every race doesn't do this is absolutely beyond me. I think it's the most convenient and easiest way to get hydration and also to stay cool uh, if you want to pour the water over your head. Just a great, uh, a great um, feature uh, at Reggae Marathon. Now, you're heading out to mile two at this point. You're on the right side of the road. Look out for the really fast high school kids as they come blazing back towards the finish on the left-hand side of you. Um, I imagine I look just as um, effortless as they do. Of course, it's just in my imagination. Now, you continue on just a little bit past mile two. You come up to the really the only two inclines on the entirely flat Reggae Marathon course, and that's the incline over uh, the Negril River. Just past that is the turnaround, the roundabout. And what you want to do is look out for the timing mats at that point. Very important that you cross the timing mats at that point. Volunteers, of course, are there, and they'll direct you back around the timing mats. So now you start to head back north towards the start-finish line. You come up to mile three really quickly after you come back up that incline and come down again. And uh, if you're doing the 10K, well, you're about halfway home. So um, it's been a great morning so far. Now, look out for the light at this point. Um, around this, this time of uh, the morning for us mid-packers, uh, you'll start to see the sun come up, the, start, the, sun, uh, the, the sky start to lighten. And uh, you'll see all the other runners coming towards you as they come by. And uh, you see everybody in front of you as well as you head towards mile four. And that goes by rather quickly. All of a sudden, you seem to be upon mile five. That's just before the couple swept away resort. And um, what you want to start to think about at this point is, um, you know, the turn that's actually coming up if you're a 10K walker and runner. You also want to start looking out, uh, listening out for some music because you can hear that from the start finish line. Now, all runners, 10 half and full marathoners go right by the start finish area and as you come up to mile six volunteers again are going to direct the 10k walkers and runners to the left for a very sharp u-turn to head back to the start finish line about 200 meters away and they'll be directing the half marathoners and the full marathoners to continue on you're going to continue out for about another three miles in a little bit uh, to the turn out by Ryu. As you go past about seven, mile eight, you'll pass the Cool Runnings water park on the right-hand side, and you'll also see the Negril airfield. When you get to that point, you're getting awfully close to the turn. 
You do make the turn. You loop at uh, just, again, past the, uh, the second Rio uh, Resort. At that point, you've got about three miles to head back to the start-finish area. Now, big thing to look out for is Bob's Mile. And that's where you'll see some sandwich boards on the side of the road, and you'll have a chance to get uh, motivated by some sayings from Bob Marley. Great um, uh, to see. It means if you're a half marathoner, you're not too far from the finish. And if you're a full marathoner, you are um, just coming up to complete your lap, lap one. So the half marathoners will see that once, and the uh, full marathoners, you guys get to see that twice. Round mile 12, uh, mile 25, listen out again for the music. You're coming back to the start-finish line. And here's again another directional point for you. Marshals will be telling the half marathoners to stay to the right, directly into the finish chute, and the marathoners will continue on for the uh, completion of their first loop to continue back on for their second loop. So there you have it, a full lap of Reggae Marathon. Um, it is just an absolutely wonderful course to be on, absolutely flat again, except for the two inclines. And um, it's, um, uh, it's just a great place to go for a run in December, uh, when if you're coming from the north, things are, can be a little cooler. Oh, one more thing, forgot, almost. Uh, listen out for music. Every mile um, along the course, there's sound systems out on the road, and you don't want to, you, you know, you're just going to have a blast. You're running to the music, basically, running to and from the music as you go along the course. Um, and, and that's basically it. If you've got any questions, if you have anything you want to ask us, if you uh, want to get some more information or you have a, a question that you, you just want answered, a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, leave us a, a comment here on Facebook, or you can message us directly. We'll answer it in the blog. We'll answer it on Facebook. And uh, next month, we'll come back and do some more frequently answered questions, uh, things that uh, we get from, from you. So look forward to seeing you. Until next time.